Good morning YouTube and today I have for you my updated deck for hire. Um, it just got some new support from the newest set. Uh, I went to the sneak peek, did some did fairly well with it. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more as we go. Let's hop right into it. Starting off with our monsters, we run two of Raphael. Um, Raphael is your your big your main boss monster of the deck. Uh, he has blanket monster negation, plus if you special summon you can excavate cards equal to the number of uh, monsters for hire you have and uh, pick one of those and add your hand. Just a fantastic card and your biggest boss monster of the deck. We run uh, Wiz, Wiz Sage for hire. So, uh, Wiz is your spell and trap negation, so we, she's the equivalent of Raphael, but just a little bit different. And we run one Dinah and one Sagittia. Um, Sagittia I find more uh, useful as, I, as, as for what this deck facilitates being an OTK unit. Um, she just does the burn and helps you, you know, generate advantage that way. And Dynac allows you, especially if you um, run out of pl ways to utilize your monsters on the field, he's the only one that can be targeted for attacks, so that gives you some advantage there. All, all in all, I like having the diversity, and if you're noticed, there's going to be a lot of different names in this deck. So let's, and that's it for the big monsters for hire. Next, run a playset of Bravo. Um, all the, the monsters for hire under level 5 have the ability that you can special summon a monster for hire from your hand. Uh, once per turn, and then they each have their own little flavor afterwards. He gives each monster prior 500 attack defense, which you wouldn't think would be that much, but realistically it stacks up and allows you to uh, play more blindly going into your OTKs. Really fantastic. Uh, next, moving on, we run one Seal. Seal allows you to recover your, your, recur your graveyard, add stuff back to hand, and he's just a bigger body. Uh, Beat, we're on a play set. Beat is one of the best monsters for hire in the deck. It allows you to search for anything once when... And these, most of these are based off of when another monster for hire special summon, but more often than not, you're going to, to have that. So, uh, Beat is fantastic. Level 3, that actually comes in handy quite uh, a lot with, with this deck, and we'll dive more into that as we go. Uh, 2, Helmer. Helmer is, is your... Uh, your extra draw power outlet, um, not much in terms of, or nothing in terms of attacks, so that's where its downside is, but overall a great card on top besides that. I run two Recon and two Dompa. I keep on um, going back and forth between having all these in here, um, especially the, the two Recons, but realistically having more names in the deck is amazing to have and just there's there's stuff in the extra deck that allows this. Plus, with a new spell card, having these level twos really isn't too terrible. And rounding up our monsters for hire, we run two Philo. Uh, Philo is a relatively new one. Allows you to special summon from your graveyard, go for more extensive um, XCs or syn or uh, synchro or link plays rather um, with this deck, and just all around decent card. Uh, next, moving on, I do run a sort of danger engine. Uh, the nice part, the the thing that about this deck is that if you get the normal summon uh, monster for hire negated, it's difficult to generate an advantage after that point. So I run a lot of cards that can extend that aren't just monsters for hire. So I run one Nessie, one Ogopogo, uh, one Mothman, primarily for a name. It's also an insect and it's level four. So all those come in handy at one point in time or the other. Uh, one Chupacabra, one Tutsunogo, and one Jackalope. Um, each one of these has their own pluses and minuses. Um, all in all, I've found them to be pretty darn nice in the deck, um, and I would definitely recommend giving the uh, Danger Engine a little bit of a shot. If not, realistically, everything in this, uh, other of these monsters besides Monsters for Hire, are just basically designed to give you some extra summon power that you wouldn't normally have. That being said, we run one uh, Ancient Warriors Long Gu Loyal Guan Yu, uh, one Pankertops, one Mandragora. Uh, Mandragora is a plant, so that's really one of the biggest things. It's it's that's really realistically the only thing. And then a level four, that also is another thing. Uh, one Photon Thrasher. The wonderful thing about Photon Thrasher is not only its level, but its additional re reinforcement in the army uh, search, which if you already have your beats activated or 
use in the deck, it's nice to have just a Photon Thraster in the background. Uh, Jester Confit. Jester Confit is one of your best inherent summons because it doesn't require anything. It's just a free summon and it's a spellcaster, which you only run one other one in the main deck. So all in all, fantastic. And I these are just my small ones that I've decided to run there. There's plenty of other extenders that you can use, like a Cyber Dragon or something. Whatever you have available, just go for as many additional extenders as possible rather than just Monsters for Hire. And that will allow you to be able to continue past interruptions. Hopefully. That's the, the dream, at least. And it, it's worked pretty well for me so far. Uh, next run, a playset of the new Rookie for Hire. I was banging on running two, um, but I bumped the deck up to 42 cards, and I rarely ever see two of these in my opening hand, which is fantastic. You want to see at least one, hopefully, and that will allow you to uh, tribute a monster. It doesn't have to be a monster for hire, which is really nice, and you can special summon a monster for hire from your deck. The downside being you can only attack with monsters for hire that turn, but realistically, there are so many things that this one additional monster will get you, like for example if you go for a beat like it's on the card, um, that more often than not this that downside will actually be able to allow you to push and do the extra damage. Um, that's an unfortunate downside that they could have maybe lived without, but all in all still a great card. Recommend it at three, maybe even two if you're that kind of a person. Uh, next run two, Mayhem for Hire. Wonderful quick play spell, that's one of the best parts about it, and um, Special summon a monster for hire from the graveyard. Amazing. One monster born, just generic. Special summon back stuff. That's I would like to run that versus the running the third mayhem because this is always live. Um, it's just so amazing. One reinforcement in the army just to sort of shut your beat or your photon thrasher in this case. Uh, one mind control and one instant fusion. Just because realistically, your opponent will likely be playing you know monsters hopefully, and you can use these to get them and be able to go for more stuff options for your Fulgo and just base off your summons off of what attributes they are what types of monsters they have all in all fantastic and while i don't run any per se cards that will generate interruption or protection um i elected to run none of it because i want to be able to play through negates um, which is a downside and it's definitely something that puts me more at a disadvantage but it makes the deck so much more fun because you can always just keep on summon, 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 summon. And that's it for the main deck. Moving on to the side, we run, we run one Nightmare Cerebus, one Nightmare Phoenix, just to get rid of just back row stuff. Additionally, like it just clears up your own board and pops stuff. Uh, one Underclock Taker, if you're wanting to go for that extra damage, it's there. You can you can easily swap this out for any other level to like an IP or something like that. I just like Underclock Taker. Um, spicy Tech, one generator, uh, transverser. Just being able to steal your opponent's monsters is amazing. Like, let's say you bait out one of their negates and you end, like, let's say, with a Philo. Well, you can, or you can have a Philo anywhere and just, like, swap control. Oh, look, your Philo is in attack position. Now you have a zero attack monster that can attack over it. And I just took whatever you had, which I can either use for attack or to link off into one of your two Falgos. I definitely would recommend running at least two. Um, because it's so easy to go into this guy. You could even justify running three, but rarely I ever see, find the need for that. The biggest downside of Falgo is that you can't use him as a link material. But that's nullified by the fact that he's so amazing otherwise. If he's linked someone using three different types of monsters, which most of the deck is pretty diverse when it comes to types, I don't find myself finding having the same two types on the field very often. Um, which is, again, another reason why I like running the generator, because it's a rock, and the rest of the deck is a rock. Um, but running the fall goes in here, whenever you use three different types, you can special summon a monster for hire from your deck in defense position, but you can still utilize it, and it allows you to extend past that. Additionally, if a monster for hire destroys a monster by battle, you can draw a card. If you control three different names, then you can draw two additional cards. So it just draws three cards, gives you a special summon, like, all in all, great card. Gives you two zones you can work with. I mean, it's it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, next run, a Black Lesser Soldier, uh, Soldier of Chaos. Easy to go into, easier than you might think, um, because, um, you of course, you have your, your level threes, but if, if you can go to a Raphael um, that you bring out from a Falgo or something like that, you can utilize it and just make this guy, make it protected. Fantastic card. Used him a lot. Uh, Appaloosa, just in case you're forced to go first. This is for sure going second deck um, in my testing. Um, but Appaloosa's in there just because. Access Code Talker, amazing card. 
Don't, no need to explain there. Uh, your instant fusion target is Thousand Eyes or Strick. Again, steal your opponent's monsters. That makes everyone happy. Uh, moving on to the Xyz, Ruin 1, number 64, the Ronin. Um, he gives you an additional token, allows you to get over some, some threats. Realistically, I just kind of want to play this card. Um, you can definitely justify swapping him out for some more links, stuff like that. Again, like IP or Unicorn or or so many other options that there are out there. Um, I like to run it in there, though, just because. Uh, just because for the memes, I like to run a Nightmare Shark and a Gogo Cowboy, just because you might need that little extra edge going for game. Again, I've said it once and maybe four times in this in this profile. If you need to swap these out for something else, whatever you strikes your fancy, that's fine, like a, a Baguska or something like that. Or something like an Abyss Dweller, because I do run at least one, because graveyards always matter. And rounding up our extra you run a number 38, because believe it or not, you run plenty of 8s, you run the Raphael, you run two of, your two of your dangers are level 8s, so I like to run this in there just as an option. And that's going to wrap up my deck pro profile for hire. Um, I absolutely love this deck. Um, the mercenary pirate kind of motif really got me into it in the first place. Um, it's just so fun to be able to go through some semi-mindless uh, summons. It's easier to pick up, but you can generate a lot of, of knowledge as you play this deck, and so that makes it pretty well-rounded. Um, again, it really dies on the normal summon, and then the fact that you have to pack it in with a bunch of stuff to extend can be its downside. Now, that being said as well, some alternatives you might take, like let's say you want to throw in Nibiru. Nibiru will give you a monster, gives you a rock, so you don't have to worry about that because your only rock is in your extra deck aside from the potential Nibiru or some other monsters like let's say if you want to throw in like a Kaiju engine and then they get a Kaiju, you get a Kaiju, you get a monster for free. Um, those are other options. Obviously there are dozens and dozens of ways that can make this deck generate so much more advantage, but I love it mostly pure just because. Um, if you have any questions, let me know down in the description, and I'll do my best to answer them, or maybe someone else can answer them. Uh, any suggestions will be fine. Um, again, I, I, when it comes to these kind of suggestions, I take a lot of them with a grain of salt, especially when it comes to the deck that I won't be playing a whole lot. Um, I did play this at the uh, premiere event yesterday that we had, um, because the uh, Kevin was generous enough to let me play play the new cards, and uh, I ended up going two and two. Um, some interesting rulings uh, went into play, but it's all right. It's all right. It's a fun deck, and I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not gonna be dropping anytime soon. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed and got some ideas from here. Let other people know down below what ideas you have, because a lot of times that's what the comment section is for. That's what people will look at it for. Is like, what other changes can I make based off of what other people have seen? So, so be sure and throw in your options down below. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.